Good morning, Calvary, uh, and happy Labor Day. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day uh, on this, uh, this Monday that uh, we're supposed to celebrate Labor Work Day. By the way, I just got to tell you, my parents used to tell me that Labor Day was a day that was uh, a holiday set aside so you could work at home and uh, have projects. So it's my least favorite holiday on the calendar. But uh, hey, we're looking at a passage now in Proverbs chapter 5, which offers up a contrast between uh, uh, the, the wife that you value and the temptress. Now, we all know in the desert, water is life, right? I mean, if you don't have water, you're going to die, especially when it's hot and you're outside. So, uh, and Calvary understands this is a, a real physical thing. That's why we uh, helped to build freshwater wells in Mozambique. We funded between 60 and 70 wells over these past five years. Uh, just an amazing ministry. We're blessing about 50,000 people a day. Uh, in the name of Jesus because of that. But uh, Proverbs 5 uses the picture of a well and a cistern and, and a leaking cistern to uh, emphasize the importance of fidelity in marriage. So it begins with a strong warning against the temptress. Uh, and again, and, and the language is sexist because Solomon is talking to his sons. So it's put in that, that context. He says, For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol, which is the place of the dead. Now, uh, that's a pretty grim picture. And, and Solomon is warning his boys uh, about the dangers of messing around, of being immoral, of cheating on your wife. Okay, that, that's what he's emphasizing. He wants them to be people of fidelity, of faithfulness, to their spouse. And then in verses 15 through 19, he, he just has this beautiful picture of what that faithfulness looks like. He says, drink water from your own cistern. Okay, flowing water from your own well. Again, these are desert people. Water was essential to life. He said, should your springs be scattered abroad, streams of water in the streets? No, let them be for yourself alone and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. Like a lovely deer, a graceful doe, let her breast fill you at all times with delight. Be always intoxicated in her love. Now look, I love Solomon's picture of fidelity and the blessings of a faithful marriage and a faithful wife and, and just how that is like a blessing to you that is uh, like having a a well of wonderful water always available for, for your life. Uh, and I love the picture of, like, why would you dump your well water out in the streets to waste it? That's what he's talking about. He says immorality is just wasting the precious gift that God has given you. Now, two thoughts on this. The first one is no relationship, no marriage is going to thrive unless you constantly invest time, protect your heart, and delight in your spouse. I mean, that's just what he's saying here. Look, delight in the spouse of your youth. So what are you doing today in your relationship, if you're married, what are you doing to invest time in that marriage? What are you doing to protect your heart for the marriage? And what are you doing to delight in your partner? Because if you're not doing any of those things, then your relationship is going to struggle. You're gonna be tempted to pour your waters out into the streets. Now, the second thought is just this. If you've wasted the water at some point, if your fountain has run in the streets at some point, you've wrecked a marriage or maybe you've been betrayed, can I just remind you that God redeems? That God is always working to redeem and he wants us to rebuild our lives. And when we listen to what he says and we apply those truths to our life and, and to our marriage, then God is going to heal. God's going to restore. God's going to redeem. God's going to build a new chapter in your life that's going to bless you. But it only works if you listen to his wisdom and you apply it to your life. So uh, I hope and pray that you can delight in your spouse, whether it's someone you've been married to for, uh, like me, 37 years, or whether you're on round two and it's the first time you've really committed your marriage to God. Uh, I'm just praying that he will bless you and you will rejoice in your spouse. God bless. Have a great day and a happy marriage.